Hold my tongue never. I say what I feel. Look you in the eye, never ran, never will. Hold my own destiny, both hands in the wheel. In the darkness, they found light. So at the top of your lungs, scream, this ain't life. So when they move left, you move right, you move right. Hold my tongue never. I say what I feel. Look you in the eye, never ran, never will. Hold my own destiny, both hands in the wheel. What kind of cook do you do to tonight's taping of rabbit holes? Um, you know, for those of us who are lucky enough to, to be here, uh, we're joined by a special guest, Mr. Roger Williams. Roger, welcome. I'll introduce you here in a second, but I just wanted to say hello. Thanks, boss man. I'm glad to be here. Oh, you're welcome. So, um, you know, tonight is kind of another just intro show to the platform for all the listeners out there. Um, you know, like I said before, it's just kind of like a, an hour We'll call it a car ride. Uh, Roger and I don't know each other other than the little bit of communication we've had back and forth. But, uh, you know, we're going to see what we can learn here today because he's got a topic. So Roger has a topic. He has, well, he's actually, he's been around. So you may have seen him before <laughs> on places. But um, I'm just going to read him here, your bio from your from your website, if you're good with that, Roger. Yeah, that, go. that way everyone knows exactly so, um, Roger is a writer, podcaster, adventurer, and head crosser offer of his bucket list. After more than 30 years working in youth development and teaching field, a year in quarantine, and two heart attacks, oh wow, Roger embarked <laughs> on an adult gap year to prioritize a life in which he is known not by his professional work, but by the way he lives his life and the people he grows up relation, grows relationships with. He just completed a three-month journey traveling around the world to cross items off his bucket list, and inspiring others to do the same. And I bet you that after we talk, he's going to inspire at least me and probably some of our listeners. So Roger, welcome. Thanks, boss man. I am really glad to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I love meeting new people. So this is great. Yeah, this is the perfect place for it. Perfect place. So well, like I said, you and I were lucky enough to come across one another and we got you set up here tonight. So, you know, I'm going to learn even more than I'd planned on because after I dug into you a little bit, you know, you're a you seem like you got it figured out. I mean, oh. you, you know, you, you, you took this opportunity, you made the bucket list and you're, you're after it and you're, you know, kind of filming along the way. So that's really cool. So I guess first, like what, what kind of inspired your, your bucket list to make you the top crosser offer? Yeah. So you know, a lot of people saw the movie, the bucket list back in 2007. Mm-hmm. And I, I was in my thirties at that point. And, and, you know, if you, track the movie at all it's like uh this is this is an old person thing right this is the thing you do yeah. just right before you're about to retire and you know so i had a list in my head surveys say that uh, national surveys in the united states say that 95 percent of the people have a bucket list right. but only about 40 percent are actively doing anything to cross it off and i was kind of in that 55 percent range right i had these things in my head that i wanted to do and so, uh, you know, I just kept it there and it was never a priority for me. Yeah, and then, you like know, yeah. And then, and then 2020 rolled around. We, we won't say the words because it gives people PSTD or PTSD. Right. Um, but yeah, I found myself like a lot of people, like just, you know, trying to figure out who I am sitting in my couch, you know, doing a Zoom meeting every two minutes or every two hours and then watching episodes of, you know, Game yeah, of there Thrones. was a lot of, finding finding yourself in those yeah and so i at the end of december 2020 i actually had a heart attack and that's uh when i i you know came out of that um and just really started searching out where asking myself the question where do i find my self-worth right i've been i've been in this youth development field. I've been a teacher, a youth pastor, uh, ran nonprofits for young people. I did all these things um, for students. And although lots of people will say, oh my gosh, that must be so rewarding for you that you, you know you do this for children and you must get so much out of it. And it's like, yeah, I do, but damn, it's still a job, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly right. I mean, that's work for you. I mean, yes, it's rewarding, but it's still a job. Yeah. And so I think in America, especially, you know, when we meet somebody new, we say, what do you do? And we're asked, we're, we're really asking the question is, is who do you sell your labor to and how do you sell it to them? Right. And I like the way of looking at it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so I really decided that I didn't want my self-worth if I met new people wrapped up in that. I wanted to be able to answer that question differently. I wanted to be able to say, this is what I do. I do weird stuff and I, I go on adventures and I meet new people and I visit my friends halfway across the world. And, you know, I, I wanted to be known for the stories that I could produce um, that didn't have to necessarily do with my job because immediately people start judging you based on what that is that you do to sell your labor and, and whom you sell it to. Right. If you, if you, you know, work, a if you work on Fiverr and, and do work for, you know, some website, it's much different right. than saying I work for Microsoft, right. People's impressions of you is much different. It is, but also back to what you said, which was a great point. Um, you mentioned that, uh, you know, what do you really talk about? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not, I'm looking back on every conversation I had and, how was your weekend? What did you do? Well, you know, it's it's never like you said these stories. Yeah, so I've gotten the cut more custom now when I first meet somebody. I'm saying, "What are you into?" Right? <laughs> what are you into? Because that's such a broad question. You can talk about work if you want, but you can also talk about just anything, right? Yeah. And so I, you know, I started wrestling that with that question, and I had this bucket list in the back of my head. And I, and I just said, it's time. I mean, I'm 51 years old and I'm, and I'm ready to go. I'm no longer going to sit around and wait for stuff to happen or wait till I retire. And so I just went to all my social media accounts and, and uh, changed my job to head crosser off of my bucket list. And that's kind of how it was born. That's an awesome story. It really is. I mean, way to go for just taking that step, you know, cause that's, I can't imagine doing that. It's just a, <laughs> gotta be tough. But no, you <laughs> End of 2020, was that your first or your second heart attack? First. Okay. Um, and then you so, had another one since. Yeah, I had another one in 2021. Um, yeah, in October of 2021, which is a whole other story that we'll probably get to. <laughs> but for me, you know, I had this bucket list in my head, and it was the first time I actually wrote it down. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be the head crosser from a bucket list, uh, I'm going to decide what, how I want this list to look. What are the things I want on it? And I'm going to write it down. Because there's, you know, if you keep the list in your head, you can't cross anything off. Well, you know, I'm gonna, forward. I'm gonna pause you real quick because you're gonna sure. tell us about this, and I can promise you that this is probably gonna be something I use to make my bucket list because I don't have one yet. <laughs> and I bet you listeners will listen to this and probably take something from it. You know, that's at least we want them to take something from it. So tell us about how you did it. Yeah. So I just, I, you know, I, I've just read, released a book called. Uh, uh, live out your list, uh, finding joy through a bucket list lifestyle. And basically I walk people through all the steps, right? And the first step is, you know, getting your head around this mindset of having a bucket list. Um, okay. And the first thing to do about that is really to set an intention. Why are you doing this? If, if you were boss man, we're going to start a business tomorrow. You would write a bit, you would write a mission statement for that business so mm -hmm. that that mission statement can guide you and drive you and help, you know, light the way on where you're going and what you're going to do. I like it. Start with a mission statement. Okay. Yeah. So, so I say, you know, find your intention, right? What is right. your intention for this list? What's your intention for doing these things? And basically what I, what I suggest to people is that they just say, you know, what is the one benefit that you want to get out of doing these bucket list items? Is it broadening your horizons? Is it uh, meeting new people? What's the, what, what is the benefit that you want to receive? So in the book, I go through eight different benefits that you can, you know, look through and hear stories of mine and other people's to kind of see, okay, well, is one of these eight or do I have a different one? Right. Mm -hmm. Mine, I don't even think I put my intention on the list, um, but the intention for my bucket list is I want to be a more communal person. I want to meet new people. I want to spend time doing yeah, things. Yeah, you're definitely, it looks like you're heading in the right path because I mean, <laughs> just seeing it here live in the flesh. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. And so, so the, wow. things, the things that I put on my list are directly connected to, for the most part, group activities, right? Either with people I know or people I don't know yet. And so yeah. that's really what drives me as I created my list, right? So the second step is to sit down and you really have to write it out. I don't care if you, you know, type it out, you get a pen and paper, you know, however it is, there's apps, there's all kinds of apps out there that you can get, you know, to right. help you manage your bucket list. And those things are great. But I really stress to people that you should really at least once write it down on paper because there's something about that process that really gets ingrained in your head. Oh, wait a minute. This is real. I'm going to, I'm going to do yeah. these things. Right. And, and at the same time, it also gives you a chance, like, like my list is on my mirror in my bathroom. 
So every morning I wake up, I see that list. It reminds me every night before I go to bed, I see that list. It reminds me of things that I want to do or things that I need to start working towards uh, completing and being able to take off. But I have that list. And the other thing about having a written list is that, you know, there's great satisfaction of once you get, so, you know, once you've done something on that list to actually take that and cross that off, yeah. you know, cross yeah. that off. I, I, I'm I big with that work i yeah. have a list or nothing like this but you know i love making sure all those little things are checked off and then the yeah, other thing you said like writing this list i mean it's I, I like it a lot because another thing that i've gotten into is like uh you know six sigma lean six sigma mm -hmm. so you know how they build the like the bubble charts i call them they have another name but like I've been doing that a lot too. So like that's another thing that's one of those things that just gets you ready for it. Is, is that mind mapping? Is that what that mm, is? I don't think they called it. I mean, it may be called that yeah. by some people, but yeah, All I right, mind yeah, mapping. I took you away. I'm sorry. Let's go back. No, you're fine. No, I mind map. I love talking about mind mapping. I mind map my books that I'm writing. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. actually huge charts. So I guess we're you know, that's that's what this show is all about. There's no there's no format. So yeah. you mentioned your book. Let's talk about your book real quick. So yeah. did you write your book during this whole experience or after, before? How did that pretty all much, Pretty much at the end, right? Um, okay. uh, when I um, when I finally started my adult gap year, one of the things on my bucket list was to write a couple books. Okay. And, and so I have had several books in my head for many years and then never did it, never did it, never did it. And so I decided that I was going to take about three months um, do a little bit of traveling and at the same time attempt to write some books. I got two of them started really well. And um, the one that I'm most excited about um, besides the one that just came out was, is a memoir about uh, me and my dad and his relationship with his father and my relationship, how that affected my relationship with him. And then now what I'm trying to do to kind of not right wrongs, but, you know, kind of course correct, uh, yeah. with my with my son and yeah. and so my father passed away uh last may and so in the midst of me yeah. doing that oh no thanks I, I i am so lucky boss man i know it every single day i know it every i my i'm 52 and my dad and i um did not have a good first 32 of my life right. and there was just one occasion that'll be in the book where we sat down and you know out of no real intention of mine or intention of his wound up talking for like four hours and just hashed everything I mean, out you know already just talking to you here tonight roger you can see that like a lot of the topics you mentioned whether in passing like they're all very important so you can see why a book like this you know even the the premise of the the bucket list it's all pretty cool topics so i'm glad, oh, we, glad we get you on here tonight to talk about it yeah so um <clears throat> So I went out and I started writing those books. My dad passed and I, I kind of put a pause on that and, and to really start thinking about, okay, now that he's gone, what do, what do I want to leave? You know, what legacy do yeah. I want to leave for him? And, and uh, I'm still very excited about it, still working on it. Um, but, uh, but then I, I came back from my uh, trip, um, got settled back into the, the real world, so to speak. And um, I host, a, I also host a podcast. Right. Uh, just about people's bucket list items so i get one guest every week that comes on and just shares something that they've crossed off their list and we just talk about that one item for about a half an hour and so been doing that for a while and having my own experiences was when i came home and was like i think i can bust this book out pretty good <laughs> pretty quick and I mean, it it's, it's pretty it's, good um i guess what's the word i'm looking for here but just showing you know everyone that you're able to do that many things at once it just shows people what's capable you know if you put your mind to something and you you actually try and you go out and do it like there there's crazy amounts of things you can actually do that you would never think you could and just oh. hearing all those things from you that's what it sounds like you know i did this i did this i traveled the world that it's like oh my gosh how do you do that much but i wasn't always like that <laughs> Right, so, right. Um, you know, I, I joke around that I'm an Aquarius, so I get a I get a million dollar idea every like five, ten minutes, you know. Yeah, I love um, million dollar ideas. But but I never do it, but I never did anything with them. I think it's what drove my first wife away or one of the things, but you know, <laughs> it, it's you know, you can have these ideas and, and so that was like something for me. We we talked about having a bucket list mindset, getting setting your intention, starting mm -hmm. to use that intention to create the list, and then 
how do you manage that list once you've got it done where do you what do you start crossing off first what you know and I, in the book there's like 15 different strategies on how to go about that and for me personally like I was just a procrastinator. I was not someone that followed through. So when I decided that I was going to take on this lifestyle, I said, I'm going to have to go big or I'm going to have to shut up and go home. <laughs> and so, so for me, going big was something, uh, tackling something that I had had on my bucket list for a long time, um, probably about 11 years in my head. That was the first thing I put down on the list when I started writing it was to walk the Camino de Santiago in, in Spain, which is a 790 kilometer trek across Northern Spain. It takes about 30 to 33 days, depending on how you do it. And I just knew like, I have to go do this thing. Um, and, and if I can do this, then I can do anything. And so that's what I did. I, I, in the middle of the pandemic, I bought a plane ticket to Spain, not knowing if the country was going to be open, not knowing if. Yeah. How was that experience trying to get there and get home? Was that something? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't too bad. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, you, if you're traveling in the time of the pandemic, yeah. you definitely yeah. have to, you definitely have to decide like, okay, I've got to every day get up and like, see what, see what's new, because that's yeah. the biggest thing. Everything was changing on a daily basis. And so, yeah. you know, getting into one country, like I flew through Scotland or yeah, through, through Ireland and then went to, to France and then took train down to Southern France and then walked across the border into Spain. And then when I was done from Spain, went back to, to Ireland, back to London and back home. So I don't you know, how close all those places are. Isn't it, you know, we're yes. all here, but they're all right there. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a different mindset over there when they travel because they just, you know, in Europe, everything's so close and they just, you know, it's no big deal to, to go someplace. That, that's one of the things with the Camino that kind of surprised me as I was walking and meeting these people from all around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there were people that were doing one week or two weeks and then they were going home and it's like, where are you going? You got to finish. And they're like, Oh no, I'll come back next year and, you know, pick up where I left off. And it's like, Oh, how much joy that would bring me if I had that opportunity. Right. Like, yeah. like it's kind of like the AT or the PCT or the, or the, Oh, well, that's, you know, that's right there. like you explained the procrastinators yeah. there. I'll do this much and then come back next year. Well, some yeah. of them come back. Yeah. And to me, it's not procrastinating. It's, it's, you know, just doing it how you can do it. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Too. You know, some people through hike, some, you know, it's, it's your PCT, it's your, it's your Appalachian trail, you know, yeah. however you get it done, that's, you got it done. I mean, I don't care if it took you, you know, seven, eight years, you got it done, you know, I mean, that's all a, right. That's so we're in the middle of the steps there, but let's go back to the book. I had two questions that I was thinking. Yeah, about sure. You from the book. So how long does it take you to write a book? If you, if you <laughs> You know, like uh, if it's nightly for this many nights or if it's all day for this, you know, how, how long do you think it took you to write that book? Uh, I would project that it probably took me about uh, 30 hours, okay. 30 to 30, 40 hours. Uh, I can I can usually I, I could write faster if I didn't do the one thing that everybody told me when I started writing a book not to do, which is to edit it as you go. Okay, so I was gonna, that's what I was going to ask you, though, because if I was writing, like, I feel like I could write pretty quickly, but my mind right. goes, you know, so many places that it would need edited a lot. That that would be my part of being an author would be editing. Yeah. And so so that was it was that for me, you know, so I was writing I was writing about a thousand words an hour. Okay. So, I, so I'd write two or three hours a day and then pick it up the next day. And the biggest thing for me was getting the outline down once i got the outline down it just came out um you, yeah, know, it's when you when you started writing the book from the day you put the first word on there until the book got published that's got to be a long process right um self-publishing these days it's, it's kind of like oh, okay. it's kind of like it's kind of like asking you about youtube right i mean it's right like, it's like how long does that take well actually you just plug stuff in and you <laughs> you, you, you go so you yeah. you did everything yourself then that's cool. yes yeah cover and everything i did i did the whole nine yards and you know formatting it for you know kindle and for it being published in paperback on amazon i did it all so uh, yeah it's you know uh, that's something else i've learned this past year you know taking this time is just to say i'm gonna i'm gonna figure it out right i mean I worked with teenagers for a long time, like I said, and, 
you know, the kids today, they, <laughs> we talked about maybe talking about old guy stuff, but, yeah. you know, I mean, the world is literally at your fingertips. Yeah. And, well, that anything you want to do, you can do it by watching. Yeah. YouTube. It's sad. Yep. It, scary it's great i don't know what it is but i can think of all kinds of things i do by watching it you know i can only imagine what else is out there i don't even know about but who knows yeah and it's so if you want to do it you do it and that's just what i did i, I you know i watch videos i read articles i you know subscribe to people's newsletter procrastinating ring close to home too because I, I feel like when you say that that's a lot like me like i tell them oh we'll do that in two weekends or yeah. like yeah. second tuesday of next week type of thing you know never gonna happen yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's get back to your story. You were uh, telling us about your um, your go to. Yeah, the the walk across Spain. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Mm -hmm. After that, we'll we'll come back to that. But my sure. other question I had was, you told us about roadblocks. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is your go to? Like Roger's number one go to roadblock. What you do to get out of the roadblock? Like, what's a good mind clearer? If I'm riding, yeah, yeah. So, so I I'm a defensive driver as well as okay. how I would answer the question. Like, so I know I'm gonna procrastinate. Yeah. So, so once I figured out I can write a thousand, you know, <laughs> words and words an hour, I just decide, okay, I'm gonna do two hours. I'm okay. Gonna reps. I'm gonna do two hours, and then tomorrow I'm gonna put in two hours, and then the next yeah. day I'm gonna put in two hours, and I'm on it. You, yeah. Well, it's it, not as much a time limit as space, right? right. I set space for it. And well, then, if you look at all the famous people in history, they always have like their schedules. They had their entire day from tea, coffee, you know, whatever the hell they did. But I saw one the other day that was, I think it was Benjamin Franklin or somebody like that, but it was hilarious. Uh, and then I saw, uh, what's the guy from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the movie? Um, Hunter uh, S. Thompson. Yeah, Hunter S. Thompson. And it was like, you know, just he woke up at like eight o'clock at night, and <laughs> whatever he did, but he had it all on a schedule. <laughs> Which is uh, really weird and amazing for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the stuff okay. that he did. But all right, yeah. let's go back. Let's go back to the, the outline. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, the biggest part of it for me was, you know, outlining the book. And and once I got the outline lying down, it just, it just seemed to flow. Uh, it's, you know, different than writing like the memoir or writing fiction or anything like that for me, at least um, to think about it, because I've been a teacher for so long. It was super simple for me to say, OK, here are the 10 steps you need to do or here are the eight questions you need to answer. You know, it was like writing a syllabus almost and yeah. putting out a lesson plan. So so it was pretty simple that way. When I got the the outline done, I didn't even mind map it. I was just like, oh, the outline will do. And I just I just took off and went. So you said you have the other two still in progress. Is, are those going to be coming within the next few years, I guess? Or when do you plan on getting the three books out? Yeah, probably sometime in the next year and a half. So okay. the, the memoir, um, I've thought about taking it to a publisher and haven't decided on that yet. That mm -hmm. process, that makes it a lot longer. Um, yeah. Because okay, you have so to get, yeah. You have that's to get an awesome. agent. You have to get, you know. So... I felt like I learned a lot this past year of doing the podcast, writing the book, promoting it, doing those kind of things. Um, so uh, I've got another podcast on the brain um, to cool. support support the the memoir, and so I'm looking at um, developing an Instagram following uh, through through that, and then dropping the podcast the same time I drop the book. Uh, so, dreams, I like it. I like yeah. it. Cool. Yeah, if you're doing it yourself, you you got to get out there and hustle. So, uh, I'd like to pre-hustle instead of trying to hustle afterwards. No, uh, it's yeah, definitely this stuff's pretty cool. I enjoyed you know getting you getting you here to discuss it because those are all things that even I, you know, and I know anybody that listens to this show because anybody I know, um, all those things are probably something we haven't done and should probably start thinking about because you know, you never know, right? You never yes. know. Yeah, you, ne you never know when your time's up. But at the same time, it's not about trying to beat the clock as much as it's about, I want to do this. Yeah, enjoy. You're, it's about bringing myself joy. And so I'm just, I'm not going to wait <laughs> yeah. to do that anymore. You know, I'm not going to wait till I die, but I'm also not going to wait to bring myself joy. So and that's, so since you started in 2020, you said like, where have your, 
where have your list items taken you across uh, the across the across the globe i've been i did the camino de santiago uh which is like i says that 790 mile track and then uh i've been to costa rica i crashed a wedding in costa rica crashed and, a wedding yes <laughs> All right, let's pause there let's let's hear about that. that sounds interesting yeah so, so like i said in the beginning uh, my bucket list is about being communal and okay. so uh, i met uh, a couple on the camino de santiago as i was walking across spain who uh as we were as we got to know each other told us that they were engaged that their their marriage was you know their their ceremony was coming up that following february and um, so at lunchtime or dinner, I forget when it was, we, we started talking about this wedding and they're like, oh, we're doing a destination wedding in Costa Rica. And it's just like 50 family and friends. And mm-hmm. so so at the table, I'm like, oh, you know, to all my other friends who had just met them and stuff and not gotten to know them. I'm like, we should all crash this wedding. Like we should all just go to Costa Rica and crash this wedding. And everybody's like, oh yeah, sure, sure. And then the couple, they thought it was funny. They're like, ah, ha, ha, that's funny. And yeah, that'd be great. And all this kind of stuff. Well, that whole group of people uh, started moving at a quicker pace than me. I actually slowed down and stopped for half of a day to visit a monastery. Um, and and I was uh, getting ready to meet my partner the next day because she walked with me the last five days. Okay. And, and so I, they had gone on ahead of me. And so when they got to Santiago, which is the end point, they had a big party that night. People, I guess, got a little tipsy. And the the bride-to-be extended invitations to everybody oh uh, to come to the wedding. I was not there to get my invitation. Yeah. And so I did not know that that had happened. About two months after we got home, I start messaging people on WhatsApp and saying, hey, are we going to crash this wedding? And someone finally, you know, just t- t- crickets. Like, I got no response. And then someone finally goes, Those are um, Those are yeah. Dumb. Yeah, they they were like, uh, yeah, we all got invited. <laughs> I was just like, oh, it's on now. I mean, it's oh, on my yeah. list. I'm, not, you know, I'm gonna do it. So, uh, I, it was really nice. It was really cool because uh, I had them on my podcast for crossing off, having okay. a destination wedding, and then the episode after that, they took over the hosting job and they interviewed me for crashing their wedding. So That's it's the great. only. Yeah, it's the only time besides the, the the season finale show that I'm actually the focus of the podcast at all in any way. Uh, but it was just too much of a complete story. So so I'm like, it's on. You know, when I found out, I'm like, it's on. No biggie. And so uh, the first thing I had to do was, like, convince them that I wasn't available to be asked. So so I started talking about this big trip to Europe I was going to take and, and all this kind of stuff. And then she was like, oh, that's really good. You're going to Europe. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be fun. You guys are going to have fun in Costa Rica. I'm going to have fun in Europe. It's going to be great. And then uh, so I was actually taking a three-month trip to Europe and in right. the process of setting it up and deciding that I was going to crash the wedding, I told my partner, I'm like, well, why don't, we go, why don't you and I go down to Costa Rica together and then I'll fly off to Europe and you can fly home after the wedding. And she, that sounds good to me if you're paying. And I'm like, yeah, I'm paying. So, <laughs> so we, so we went down there and we spent like a week just hanging out in, in this little town and doing tourist stuff and crossing some other items off of my bucket list. Like this is in Costa Rica. Yeah. Down in Costa Rica. Costa and, Rica. That's a mostly English speaking country now, isn't it? Um, I mean, Spanish is primary, but they, they do. Most people speak English. Yeah. So, so we were down there. Um, it was a little tiny town because we stayed in the same town that their wedding was being held in. Um, and they were there two or three days, two or three days after we got there, they all were in town. So we were <laughs> constantly trying to avoid, yeah, them yeah, seeing, uh, but we had about the, the six or eight friends that also got invitations in Santiago were all there. Oh, they all went. Okay. Yeah. And so they all, without telling the bride and groom, came over to our Airbnb one night and I cooked them a traditional Costa Rica meal and we all hung out and, you know, they all knew, but the, but the couple didn't. And um, so the, the at next... least there were other people involved though. I mean, oh, yeah. so, I mean, I, it, when you were saying that I was a little scared cause I don't know if I'd be able to wedding crash a wedding by myself, mm-hmm. but at least you had some people there that made it feel a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it was, 
it was a really good experience and, and i'm glad my partner was with me and that was the first time she met some of those people because they had walked ahead and she didn't yeah. get to meet them and so that was a lot of fun and um yeah it was, it was a good time stories. look at all the stories you're getting from just your you know when you had this i, I don't know if you called it anything but you're when you started the crosser offer um just the you know the cool stories that come from it entertaining yeah. um so sh- i i saw you you held them up let me see your your uh <laughs> all right tell us about that one do no harm that was your first tattoo? <laughs> oh gosh, no, no, oh. <laughs> no. But knuckle tattoos have been on my list for a long time. I've okay, been that was an item though. See that? Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Like, I, I've told my wife that you know, and you know, this year, next year, no year. Well, maybe one day I'll set a date where I get a tattoo. You know. So you had none. None. Yeah. None. So my my biggest suggestion is take as long as you need. Yeah. <laughs> because they are semi permanent. You know. Yeah. You can, yeah. Even, the, when the even when they're even when they're taken off i mean they're still there like it's well, not it's that and the laser hurts more than the needle i'll just let well, you know that that. Oh, yes 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 okay. yes <laughs> the, the laser hurts way more than the needle yeah, I, don't, um, I don't want to experience it yeah so i so i both my arms are full sleeves and i've been tattooing for a while and yeah i kind of like reached my threshold like okay my arms are done i'm okay i don't need anything in my back or my legs or my stomach yeah. you know i'm a fat old guy so it's like eh, you know no real other room i'm not gonna do my neck i'm not gonna you know and and but knuckle tattoos has kind of been out there for a long time yeah yeah for everywhere. me thinking about but just for me thinking about it okay. and i did come up with the, the do no harm a long time ago because i thought that was kind of badass it was like it's like it's it's not badass, but it's totally badass at the same oh, yeah. time. If that I mean, makes you sense, play it off any way you want to play it. I mean, it can yeah, be exactly. like that anyway. Well, we're not we're not completely done, but um, to the audience, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it was just it was time, right? I mean, bucket list items don't have to be these crazy adventures. They can be anything you want them to be. And so for me, it was this had been on my list of things to do for a long time, and it you know it was, it was time to do it. So right before I went on my trip to Europe. You know, I, I went and got them done. Um, but but I had been thinking about it a long time. I think that's important. I yeah. did I did get a couple of additions when I was in Italy uh, to my to my hands. Okay. And so uh, I mean, we're cool to be cool, right? Yeah. On the show. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll show you. so it's this. Okay. <laughs> so uh, so on one middle finger it says you are, and then on the other middle finger it says number one. So I like to say eighty percent namaste and twenty like percent after you. Yeah. So. so I guess like that's one of the things I always wonder about because I'm not coming from that side. But like your hand tattoos now, like does that play a difference in like the workplace? Do they make a big deal with those things anymore? Because I know for a while there had to be sleeves and there had to be this that, and then it seems like things just kind of went away. Yeah. I think so. Okay. I haven't had a job interview for about six years, so I don't know. I'm not <laughs> entirely sure what's going to happen with my finger tattoos when that happens. But yeah. you know, it's all about how you carry yourself in life. Period. Right? If you if you act like you know what you're doing, then you know nobody cares. And so, um, so yeah. So I'll I'll go in there with confidence. My last job interview that I had, like I said, seven years ago, I had my sleeves. I walked in with my sleeves down, um, buttoned, and in the middle of the interview, I rolled my sleeves up. Right. Very naturally, nonchalant to say, "Hey, look, this is me. We're gonna keep on doing this interview, but now you know you don't have to ask. You don't have to get surprised." <laughs> you know? Oh, so you well, that, that was your um. Well, that was a good way of doing it, though. You did that on purpose, then, mm-hmm. right? So they could yes. see that. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I like that. That's pretty yeah. intelligent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, they're going to see him at some, at some point, so they might as well see him in the interview and get past that. I gave him a chance to not have that as a barrier right in, in the right. interview process and then if it was going to be a barrier it was going to be a barrier but at least they knew me before that without making it like a, an odd odd talk whatever you want yeah to cool i like those um i was interested to hear from you you know you've been all around the globe what what of all those you know you had a place to go obviously but as far as countries visiting what what do you think would be your favorite either European or, or Central American, South American, what's yeah. your favorite country you were at? So it kind of centers around food. That's why it's a little frustrating. I like that. I, I'm a so, big um, when I, when I walked Spain, 
I I fell in love with what they call a tortilla. Okay. Which is not like a tortilla like we think of a like from Taco Bell or or you know Mission or anything like that. Um, a tortilla is more of some people call it a Spanish omelet, and so it, so basically the, the the basic ingredients is eggs and and potatoes. Okay. And so they they cook it in a pan, um, and usually the ones that are done well, they've actually stick it in the oven to to top off cooking the top part. Okay. And it's just it's it's nothing. It can be something extremely special, but at the same time, it's not. And so when you're walking 20 miles a day, you know, 15 to 20 miles a day, yeah. we would have what you call first breakfast. When you get up, you probably have a croissant and you you have a cup of coffee and then you walk for a couple hours. Then you have what we call second breakfast. And second breakfast always usually for me included finding someplace where I could find the tortilla because I just, I just, I just loved it. I just fell in love with it. They just call it that there. It's not, yeah. it's just no. a tortilla. Yeah, tortilla. Most people in the states they would call a Spanish omelet, but okay. in in Spain it's called a tortilla. Uh, so every time, every time we talk food on here, we talk like you know, this is a recipe that I like for the cookbook, the Spanish Spanish tortilla. Okay. Yeah, you can, and it's super easy. It's not. It's super easy to make. It's a little bit hard to cook because you're. Some people like try to flip it over and then put it back in the pan and stuff. Yeah. But you really kind of gotta just put it in the oven and bake it off a little bit. It's and it's like you know, it's usually the really good ones are usually like two inches thick, and you know, I mean, it's it looks like a piece of cheesecake. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, look, it sounds amazing, but is this? Do they? Do any of them like put toppings on these things? Oh like, yes, like, yeah. Like, so yeah. you so you can if you're someplace fancy like um, Pamplona, where they run the bowls, they have some of the most amazing you know, uh, tortillas out there that they'd like, they'll do like, um, ham on and, and a, a jus sauce at the top of it. I saw some with seafood on them. You know, some people will put different things inside. They'll put, they'll put the ham inside, you know, it's just, they get, yeah, they get a little crazy there. Um, but when you get back into the smaller towns and stuff, it's like, here's your, here's your potato and, and egg and, you know, cheese is not really a thing. Yeah. I don't yeah. come here to get hungry, but like most of the episodes <laughs> I do on here after at the end of the show, we're always like, damn it, I'm so hungry now. I'm go to the fridge. Yeah. That's, my, that's not the point of the show, but that's what it's becoming. Yeah. My girlfriend and I, or excuse me, my partner and I, we, we, we have, we brought a friend over who know who knew how to pay, cook them. And so we spent all one Sunday just learning how to do it for ourselves. Yeah. So we're getting better and better at it. And that's fine. But it's, um, it's not perfect. It's not the same thing, but it's, but it's getting there. But yeah, I just, I was even on the plane because I went from Costa Rica to, to back to Spain for a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. uh, to start off my European uh, portion of my trip. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I was just waiting to get off the plane. I was, you know, I had a friend pick me up at the airport, and I'm like, "Eni, is there any place open right now?" And he goes, "Is that yeah. like one of those things? Is that one of the foods that like you can't recreate it? Like, is there nowhere in America where they sell them that tastes like that?" I, I don't think it's 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 the cooking process, really. It's what it all boils down to is the cooking process. Because so maybe like an authentic, yeah, you know, Spain restaurant here in America yeah. might have, but it's not going to be very common. No, it, it might be. They they probably do pretty well, and I'm sure there's lots of people that at home. That yeah, do I've well. never seen them though. I've never yeah. even seen something like that. Oh, I I can just uh, yeah. Whenever we make them here, it's like that's the meals for the next three days. I mean, that's what that's all we're eating, and that's, and that's fine with me. I'm just like yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is. It's like the simplest dish, but it's but it's so awesome. Um, and yeah, so so Spain was someplace I wanted to go back to. I spent for two weeks there. I outlined and mind mapped the books and then went off to Italy for two months to, to um, start writing. I got a little bit done. So, so where'd you stay when you were in the countries? I used Airbnb. Okay. Uh, no, at that nationwide, I didn't, or world. Yeah. Worldwide. And, and last year, cause that was February, March, April ish. Um, at that time, a lot of places were open, but they just did not have the, the, travel and tourism that they had usually had. Right. So it was, I actually, before I left for Europe, I looked at like, Oh, I can go to Colorado and get a cabin in the woods and write for, you know, three months or, you know, I can go to Montana and get a cabin. And, you know, and it was more expensive to do that than it was for me to fly over to Europe and be in Europe for three months. When you were in, uh, in those countries, did you ever 
because they're a lot different than America, right? I mean, just to the country itself is different. So did you miss America or do you enjoy being there? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I typically, typically don't miss America <laughs> very much. And there's lots of reasons for that. You don't have to go into all of them. But, you know, for me, one of the biggest things is just life's just lower. Life is, you know, um, in Spain, you know, you better get whatever you need done by one, two o'clock in the afternoon, or you're not going to get done until after six. Yeah, because they take siesta time. Yeah, right? and it's serious. <laughs> it's de deathly serious, you know, especially in the older sections where I would typically be staying in the city. Yeah. They, they, they took it pretty serious. Shops closed down, and, you know, you can buy a pack of cigarettes or get a Coke or, you know I mean? Yeah. Even the restaurants, the, the cafes, the bars, everything just shut down for a couple would, of hours. I would love to live there because I love oh, yeah. afternoon naps. That's like my go-to. On the weekend, yeah. you can count on me taking a nap. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, you would, you would like that. And just, I, I really love the concept of walking cities. Um, yep. So that was the great thing. It's like I, I never rented a car. Um, I only got taxis a few times. I use public transportation. I love public transportation. I have no problem riding on a train. I love trains. Um, so so that's not an issue for me. I'll take the bus. When I was in London, I did a lot of bus traveling um, and some train travel and I and just walking, you know, and I just love walking cities. Was it affordable to use the public transit like that? To get oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was in Chiste, Italy, which is in the north uh, eastern part of the, the country, and I have some friends in Milan and uh, that I wanted to go visit. And I took the train, train station right in Chiste to downtown Milan to the to the train station in Milan, and I think the round trip ticket was thirty bucks, okay, maybe. And it was, it, I think there were three transfers, and and it took about four and a half hours. It was a four and a half hour train ride. I haven't been to Europe and I, I think I need to get there. Definitely sounds like things that I would be entertained. By. Yeah. No, I, I just loved it. Blue pace and, just sounds like, yeah, that, that, that would be nice. I, I took a side trip to Israel for two days uh, to visit a friend in Israel. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of new experiences. Uh, food there was absolutely amazing. So okay. I t I'd tell you what I ate, but my friend wouldn't tell me. Okay. So uh, we went to a, a, a butcher who had a restaurant attached to his, his butcher shop. Okay. And uh, he went in and said, hey, could you, can you make us a, a, like a sample plate? And it was like this huge tray of all these different meats. Like charcuterie. Yeah. yeah, charcuterie of meat and uh, just meat. And he brought out and put it on the table. I'm like, all right, I take what is this? And he's like, don't worry about it, just eat it. And I was like, okay. And it was it was phenomenal. Absolutely but phenomenal. You still don't know what it was. And I still don't know what I ate. And I'm okay. Oh, with that. I just don't <laughs> care. It was so good. I trusted him. So it was no big deal. And then I also got to go to uh, a kebab place in the Muslim quarter of Jerusalem that's a hundred year old restaurant owned by the same family for a hundred years. Uh, and that was just just the people watching and the, you know, just sitting there in the middle of the Muslim quarter and uh, during, during Ramadan too, that it was just, it was just intense. It was just intense. I'm sure. I'm sure that had to be a scene. Oh man. So uh, we're wrapping up towards the end of the show here, but I want to keep going. So you and I had mentioned earlier in the show and we talked about it, the old man things. Mm -hmm. um, so an old man thing that I did, this weekend and then i want to ask you if you have one because i'm sure you do but yeah. like old man things are everything pretty much like as you're getting older you realize things you do that you remember your dad did you remember your grandpa did whatever <laughs> well like i know my my wife's dad we always talk about how he injures himself like in the garage and you mm. know doing silly things well i was in the garage cleaning sweeping and i lifted up way too heavy and do you see oh my gosh my head yeah so i took a right on the shelf you know that's just, oh head off the shelf and then just like laying on the ground kicking my feet but that's such an old man just to hurt yourself in the garage doing nothing so what kind of uh, you got uh any good old man things we could laugh about i don't know, I don't know if i have any good old man things to laugh about so i, I did one. recently go here's ahead one. so i talked about it before on one of the episodes about my old man jeans do you have a pair of jeans like just for yard work or painting or you know how no. you have a pair of jeans that's just in the corner of the closet you don't have no. that 
I, I probably do, but I, I I forgot that they were there. I've got I, when I went to Europe, I bought a couple of really nice pair of skinny jeans that are kind of flexible, so I I wear the crap out of them. So, so any, anyway, I was saying about that because we talked about it. They made fun of me. Uh, well, my mom was in town the other day, and I just happened to be wearing my old man grass jeans, and she <laughs> said something like, "Boy, those are nice jeans. Where'd you get those?" I'm like, "Yeah." see it my grass jeans my mom still gives me compliments <laughs> well like a couple of weeks ago i helped my my son and his girlfriend move into a new apartment here in seattle and um uh, i can't really remember anything i said all i remember is at some point just stopping myself and going holy crap i'm in full grandpa mode am i <laughs> aren't i because you sound just like grandpa yeah. and I'm like, oh jeez <laughs> I don't want to do that, you know. I mean, I, I don't want to be an old man, but I do want to be an old man. It's like I, yeah. I was I worked with teenagers for so long. I, I, when kids would say something silly or mean to me, I'm like, I'm not talking to you. You don't know. You don't know cursive. So <laughs> I remember I'll tell my friends this to their face, but like there is a there is a time like when I grew up. You know how like you're an adult, but like you grow up at a certain age, like you realize, oh, I better get my act together. You know, I'm gonna have kids, whatever. I remember I got my act together a little bit before some of them got their act together. Mm. And then I hung out with them after that. And I remember talking to my wife, I'm like, man, that wasn't fun. Like, how do they have fun doing that and acting like that? You know? <laughs> like, I'm glad I grew, I was glad I grew up in that moment. You know? Yeah. And, and though, so the, I can, I can tell you that you've done a good job, right? Is that, is that you, or made the right choice is because right. my friends were exactly the same. I was married at 20 children at 22. You know, I was, I was a real early adopter of, of being an adult. Yeah. And so, uh, so they were all, you know, late twenties, thirties before they got married. I have a, I have a friend who has, he's 52 and has a, has a six year old. Oh yeah. You know, it's yeah, like, know Oh my gosh, dude, dude, you, I was like, I was like, bro, you, you, are not going to have any more fun. You've got another 12 years. You, you I mean, not with that, but like my sister-in-law just had a baby. She's 40. So, I mean, yeah, that's. Yeah. And every, each to their own. I mean, if that's, you yeah. know, if that, and, and some people, they need to do that for whatever medical reasons and everything. It's like, I'm not knocking people for having children. I, late. I, I respect them even more because like sure. at my age to go out and try to play sports or do anything athletic. It's like, Oh my God, I just can't do that anymore. Yeah. So if you yeah. have a kid at 40, I'm like, Holy cow. Yeah. No, no, no. But, the, but you've made the wiser of the two choices in my opinion, yeah. um, because you just, you know, get them out of the house and, and right. get them on their way. And then you can, you know, it's your time. Right. When, yeah. Hopefully when you have more money and you have more yeah. resources and all that kind of stuff than you did when you exactly. were in your 20s. Hey. Best of luck to both you and I with our like different, you know, social media adventures here, right? For Maybe sure. Maybe be able to do that one day. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm running out of things I'd written down, but I could go on forever here just talking. So do you, uh, are you into TV or movies? Uh, I am. I, probably a little bit less. The story yeah. I like, the, the story I like, I used to watch everything. Like if it was, if it was a hit or people were talking about it, I'd watch it. And so right before we went to Spain, before my before my partner and I went to Spain in 2021, mm -hmm. um, we were watching we were watching uh, Yellowstone, and oh, we had got we had gotten through like season two, episode two, or something like that, and uh, we had to stop because we were you know we both going to to uh, Spain for a month or so. So when we came back and we're sitting around and getting reacclimated, she's like, what do we watch? And I'm like, well, we, I guess we could go back to watching Yellowstone. And yeah. I, I'll tell you, boss man, I, I couldn't get through 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I absolutely couldn't. I mean, it is a, it's a beautiful show. It's great, great scenery, great cinematography, great actors, great dialogue, all that kind of stuff. But it's just what I call train wreck TV, right? There's like, like drawn out. Yeah. Like, where it's just like come on already. Yeah, well but like nobody everybody's a murderer nobody nobody's redeemable yeah. you know and yeah. so i like i like no i can't do this and a friend of mine had been begging me for about a almost a whole year saying you have to watch ted lasso you have to watch ted lasso you have to watch ted lasso oh yeah and, i saw that that was on your that was on your bucket list yes okay. and so so uh we started well it was 
right as the second, right in the middle of when they were releasing the second season of Ted Lasso. So we, so we started watching the first season and just binged all the way through. I think there were only like two episodes left to come out when we had finally gotten, to, you know, on track. And I just, I just love the show so much. It was I, a funny I, show. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. I think that it's you know, everybody's redeemable. Everybody is holding themselves accountable to their actions. Um, and just like at most TV, like whether it's Ozark or Game of Thrones or, you know, you just throw out just about anything. It's just like, ugh, this is kind of icky. It's not like I'm a stick in the mud or I'm an old guy. It's just like, can we have something that, you know, is redeemable well, and fun? You know, that's, for that's, things? that's what happened to uh, Breaking Bad. Looking yeah. back on Breaking Bad, I liked it. But like, as people said, there were a lot of moments that were just like, come on now. Like, are you serious? But I, I didn't see that until I heard it. But right. that's kind of like Better Call Saul was for me. Like I thought that I couldn't even finish that one because it was just like so far fetched that it's just like oh yeah. And so and so like I just I kind of just started you know if it's not fun I mean comedies I'll watch and you know um, I am watching uh, House of Dragons just because. Well, you know. I mean in this I'm I'm having fun like this like here talking to you tonight. I'm sure you're doing that with all your other stuff you have going on too. I mean that's just as good as TV, right? That's right. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so as we as we wrap up here, I want to, in typical rabbit holes fashion, we're going to go right back to our main topic, which is talking about you and your your bucket list and your crosser offer list. Um, we just talked about Ted Lasso mm -hmm. on your list. So, what's like some of the ones that you're really looking forward to on your list that you have coming up here, like in the next year, like items that uh, you're going to cross off your list that you plan on doing in the next year or two years, whatever. Like what's yeah, there's uh, <clears throat> three major things that, that I'm looking at. I've got lots of, you know, smaller stuff. I'm, you know, constantly doing little things like the tattoos, but like I'm teaching myself how to play ukulele and, want to be able to um, do some social media stuff playing songs on ukulele so i'm i'm, I'm doing that um I, I still have some books to write those are things that you know i still gotta get those well, out two of them are in progress though right uh, yes yeah okay. yeah i still gotta get them out to the world um and uh yeah so th i think beyond that um i i'm 48 of the 50 states so which two haven't you been to alaska and north dakota and there's actually a sign in North Dakota that I need to find that says this is it's some big sign that people take their pictures with. It's like, yeah, North Dakota is usually the last one or something like that. It's no, I got to ask you, how did you get to how did you get to Wyoming, Oregon? Well, you live right there. Right. Idaho, how did you hit all those states and not just cross that state line once? You went down uh, the south end of it, I guess. South end of South Dakota. Yes. So I went through South Dakota on a trip to Colorado. Um, we were yeah. doing a rock climbing trip. That was a long time ago. And, and um, so we went through South Dakota and Wyoming and down into Colorado. Um, See, we're we're going to get sidetracked now. Cause this that's all right. is a rabbit holes fashion. You're yeah. wrong. Cause I would not ever in my life consider being a rock climber. That was, yeah. That was back in my twenties when, when I didn't have as much, uh, I mean, looking back on it, isn't that like the most unsafe thing you could ever do? No, if you do it right, it's, it's pretty safe. Um, I, I mean, how was it safe for like that Alex guy to climb up the flat wall with like no. Yeah. But that's like, that's like one, the 1% of climbing. Right. I mean, <laughs> most of my, most, yeah. most of my climbing was, um, you know, I did do devil's tower in Wyoming, but it, you know, you look at Devil's Tower. It's the one from the uh, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Okay, um, that's an actual place. And so we did that. And so climbing is done on a rating system. And so anything above six point oh seven point oh is really considered difficult. You need like full on equipment. Anything five point oh and, and under is more of like a scramble than it necessarily is a climb. And so we we did the scramble portion. I think it's like five six or five seven on on Devil's Tower. So that one wasn't I mean I wasn't afraid. We we did do some top rope climbing down in Colorado, um, which was a lot of fun and Garden of the Gods and on the flat irons. And so, you know, I mean, but, but if you know, if you know what you're doing, you do it right. And you've had a little bit of training, it's not too bad. 
it's one of those things that's a little too scary for me. I'm not yeah. good with lights either. So yeah. I don't have the training. I don't have lights. I'm not, you know, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> even if they have me latched up and I'm hooking in and all that stuff, I, I don't like hanging there not knowing, you know? Yeah. So one of the things in my life that I've been probably blessed with is that I've lived a lot of places. So with mm -hmm. my family when I was younger and with my fam with my family, um, my wife and children. So we lived in uh, New York, upstate New York. I've lived in Ohio. I've lived in Southern California now here. So there's been a lot of traveling to get to a new home. <laughs> there's a lot yeah, of it. And then when I did youth work, I traveled a lot with students. Um, okay. So, so yeah, so I've just been able to, to cross a lot of them off. Well, so you're a busy man, sir. Roger. <laughs> you're a busy man. And uh, I enjoyed having you on tonight, learning a little bit about, you know, you and your stories and your platform. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to use some of that advice you gave me tonight. I think Good. I am. And I hope that any of our people that listened here tonight, maybe, you know, look towards the future. I mean, it's, God, it's, I, I got, I got the kids, the wife. I mean, I got, every day they're in, different in a different school. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But here you go. You, we all have 168 hours. Yep. Every week we have 168 hours. If you sell 50 of them and you, you sleep 45 of them, you still, still got about 70 hours a week to play with. I like so, it. So, you know, you can find the time. You don't have to take, you know, you don't have to take off from work like I did for a year to, to figure it out. There's there's lots of time in your day where you can start chipping away at those things that you want to do. So okay. beautiful, beautiful advice to end it here. So Roger, go ahead and tell, tell our audience and, you know, some of your audience hopefully came over, listened, tell us one more time, you know, about like your platform and your book and where people can find you, I guess. Yeah. The yeah. best place to find everything is at, um, HTTP colon backslash backslash, uh, crossing it off podcast.com. You can find, um, the podcast there. You can find my book there. I also offer mentoring slash coaching services for folks interested in, uh, getting engaged in a bucket list lifestyle. I'm hopefully going to have e-courses up in the next couple of months. So you can find me there. Uh, the podcast is available absolutely everywhere. So wherever you are listening to this podcast, you can probably go and, and find the Crossing It Off podcast. And then um, the best place to find me uh, social-wise is on Instagram. And you can find me at crosser.offer on Instagram. Awesome. Roger, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Oh, um, awesome. Man. Thanks, man. Right. I appreciate, appreciate the invitation. Yes, yes. And audience, you know, those of us, those of you who are lucky enough to join us, we're still working on building that audience. We're going to get it. Um, but, you know, that's that's what the show is. It's just that one hour with whoever talking about whatever. You know, usually we're going to have a topic, but, hey, there's already going to be episodes called Think Tank where it's just like us and people I know mm -hmm. just talking nonsense. But, hey, sometimes nonsense is the best radio audio format, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's it. So, Roger, thank you. Audience, thank you. And. We'll look forward to seeing you on another episode of Lou Presents Rabbit Holes here. All right, Roger. Take care, sir. Thank you, boss man. Hold my tongue, never. I say what I feel. Look you in the eye, never ran, never will. Hold my own destiny, both hands in the wheel. In the darkness, they found light. So at the top of your lungs, scream, this ain't life. So when they move left, you move right. You move right. Hold my tongue, never. I say what I feel. Look